capture. Capturing is a very important part of the process with photogrammetry. You can see here uh, uh, the images that we use for this example of the project. It's important to try and reduce shine. Uh, we also learned that keeping a background with distinct shapes and objects helped align the photos. Here we're showing the import process when you first start using the Edisoft program. It's pretty easy to bring pictures in as you can see. The speed of the film that you're viewing has been accelerated to two times speed so that uh, this film will be a little bit more quick and uh, not too boring. As you can see we have these steps here where it's, um, we're showing the aligning of the photos. Um, everything's been aligned. I think the building process took about 40 minutes. So there's a lot of steps here with the Agisoft uh, software where you're going to do building and walk away and let the computer do its job. Here you can see we are removing unnecessary um, points in the background of this phase as we go through each step through Agisoft, starting with aligning the photos, building the mesh, building the cloud. We're going to continue to go in and remove unwanted data um, and or spots so that we finish with a really nice clean rendering at the end of the project. You can see here using the sphere, we're rotating the X and Y axis. It's pretty easy, um, very intuitive. Um, it is important though to consider when you're using this that you play with it a bit and also maybe save in steps. Um, right now we're cleaning up the orientation and we're going to build the dense point cloud. You can see right here again this is another layer here and we're cleaning up but you can see what looks almost more like a photograph of the hull and you can see how data again had collected and built up behind the hull. Um, when zooming in and out and cleaning up data it's really important to consider that your highlight boxes are going to highlight all the way sort of through the rendering or what you're doing. So you want to make sure that you orient orient the object in a way that you're able to highlight data that will only be deleted that you want deleted. Um, you always notice how I'm always trying to rotate the model um, certain angles so that when we go to highlight a certain spot that there's no important information or data behind that spot that we want to use. There are a few different deletion tools um, but I happen to prefer using the square box because it automatically creates a nice clean straight line. Um, you can use circles, you can use a, um, a selective wand that allows you to draw a space that you want to delete. Um, I'd say that I definitely practiced doing this deletion process um, through three or four different models. What we're watching right now is probably my fourth or fifth time I rendered this model itself. And I definitely got much better at the rendering process, um, cleaning up, deleting data as we did it. You can see here how we've got almost everything that we want. Those are the cameras that we've just turned back on. The mesh feature is really neat because it gives you an ability to see the texture that is being created in the rendering. Um, given the fact that it's photography, um, you see that the mesh is, it has like little bubbles and contours into it. Um, at this level of the program, um, we can't really do too much with the mesh. Uh, we can only continue to like clean up a little bit here or there. Um, if we bought a higher level version of the program, we'd probably be able to restructure the mesh, but not at this level of the program that was used for this project. You can see here we're just continuing to clean up and remove stuff from the object and the next phase is um, going to be going to build texture so we can really create sort of a photographic looking rendering. Building texture is one of the last steps in the photo scan process. The texture applied creates sort of a photographic looking model which is really sort of our end goal here. We have a really great interactive object that was constructed through the various layers that we built. We're going to click back now. We're going to go to mesh, we're going to go to texture, and we're going to go to our original points. You can see how the model is just really clean now. We've cleaned up all the layers, we've gone through, and we have a really great finished product ready to export.
PhotoScan allows us to export the rendered model as a PDF. PDF is really great format for us to be able to export the model in because it's a common format that anyone's able to use on both a Windows and a P uh, Macintosh computer. The PDF just needs to be viewed using an Adobe uh, viewer. You won't be able to use, for example, Preview on a Mac. You need specifically the Adobe Reader to be able to interact with the model as you see it interacting. You don't need any special skill set also to be able to rotate the model. It's really just sort of a roll the mouse, point and click kind of thing. And as you play with it, you can learn how to zoom in and out. This has a lot of great application because this means that people will be able to interact with the object without needing to actually touch the actual object. Thank you very much for watching this video and we hope that it helps.